The future target database, it has to be protected by DataGuard. With ARM and incremental backups, you can restore and recover the same backups to the future primary and the future standby database. And thus, the process of building the standby database inside the uh, maintenance window will be a lot easier. So imagine this, the users are connected to the source database. You have your target system, future primary and future standby. And now as a preparation for the migration, you build a level zero backup, then you then restore on the future primary and the future standby database. Now you have downtime and you perform a level one incremental backup and put that on top of the future primary and the future standby as well. When you then open the target database, the primary database with reset locks, it'll start to begin generating its own archive locks. And you can then use those archive locks to recover the future standby database. Then you configure redo transport and redo apply. And now you have a working data guard environment with a primary and standby database. Now the users can connect to the new target system and you are now fully protected by data guard from the very second that you complete the migration and allow the users to connect to the target system. What about a valid backup? My target database must have a valid backup before I go live on the new system. The backup pieces that are used for the migration can also be used for disaster recovery later on when you use Armand incremental backups. When you prepare for the migration, you perform the level zero backup and most likely multiple level one incremental backups. These are the yellow backups here and you take them before the downtime window. The downtime window is the red part of the arrow. And in the downtime window, you perform the last level one incremental backup. Restore that onto the target system. And now the target database, the new database will generate its own archive logs. At the same time, you also start a new level zero backup of the target database. But what happens if a crash is introduced here, a corruption, for instance, before the level zero has completed on the new target system? This is where you can use the migration pieces for your disaster recovery. Simply use the level zero and level ones from the migration, also the archive logs from the new system, and you can get to the point in time where uh, you can get to the point in time before the crash. As part of the migration, a new incarnation was introduced in the database, but Ironman can, uh, without any problems, recover beyond an incarnation change. And it works even if you also upgraded the database, because we learned previously that Ironman can restore and recover backup pieces from a previous version. So simply just start to restore and recover in the new release, and everything will be good to go unless you also convert it into a PDB. Following a PDB conversion, new backups are required of the data files that you're plugging in. Either you do a full level zero backup of the container database, or at least do dedicated backups of the data files that you're plugging in. In Oracle Database uh, 18C, the concept of pre-plugin backups was introduced that you can use for uh, recovery of a PDB, but they don't cover all the scenarios that you might want to be protected from, and especially not if you have to do point-in-time restore of the container database. So our very clear recommendation is that you don't go live on the new system following a PDB conversion unless you have new backups of the data files from the PDB that you're plugging in. What about RAC? What if your target database must be a RAC database? That's not a problem with RMAN incremental backups because RMAN and RAC are good friends. You can mix and match. You can go from RAC to RAC with RMAN incremental backups, or you can even go from single instance and into a RAC database. That is not a problem. If that's the case, I strongly recommend that you use shared storage on your rack systems to the extent possible because it will make the migration process a lot easier. 
I think that using shared stores is pretty much common practice anyway, but especially during a migration, this will make it easier for you. Because with shared storage, and if you have the backup pieces on shared storage, you can do multi-instance recovery, where all the instances in your rack cluster can work together to make the restore and recovery faster on your target database. Also, when it comes to things like passwords files, SP files, and the TDE key store, if you have an encrypted database, if that is on shared storage, it will be a lot easier.